Good morning, you beautiful people. You beautiful people. You. <laughs> yes, you're all beautiful in God's eyes. So this morning, as I sat down to uh, to read, uh, do my reading, my morning devotional, and my prayer, a paper fell out of uh, one of my books. A couple of years ago, I think I mentioned this in one of my videos before. I want to say probably 2018. For some, for some reason, the Lord just led me to write, and I just kept writing. And I would just grab papers and just write whatever, and just keep writing. And I had no reason why. And then a couple of years later, I started my YouTube channel, and I've shared a lot of the things that the Lord placed on my heart during that writing season that I had. I've actually had a couple of, couple of people say to me, you should write a book. I'm like, yeah, I don't know. I haven't been called to do that. I haven't been led to do that. It's just like I've, I've had some people say to me, oh, you should, you should preach. You should become a preacher. I'm like, yeah, I don't think so. The Lord hasn't called me to do that yet. Although the, although my pastor did approach me a couple of weeks ago about something. So uh, I, I need to, we, he and I need to sit and talk. But it's, it's not about preaching. It's something else. But anyway, so I use this, my YouTube channel, as my platform to quote unquote preach to you guys. And to whoever wants to listen, um, I know that we all, you know, have the Holy Spirit in us and he leads us and guides us. And we should always ask him to lead us and guide us in, in our prayer and our reading of scripture. We should always pray first before we dive in. Um, just like buying, you know, re diving into scripture and then praying to the Holy Spirit. To me, it's like buying uh, life insurance after you die or car insurance after you've been in an accident. So, but that's just me. Right? So if you do it the opposite way, it doesn't matter as long as you pray and as long as you read so the paper that fell out was uh i was doing the parables of jesus christ i might have recorded this video and posted it a couple of years ago i don't remember but i'm gonna do it again because i have uh more subscribers now than i did back then so this is the parable of the lampstand and this is what i wrote i don't even know when this was this, this could have been maybe four years ago five years ago i don't know so the parable of the lampstand, which you can find in Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through 16, in Mark chapter 4, verses 21 through 22, and also in Luke uh, chapter 8. So this is what I wrote. As believers, we have to be light and salt. Salt is used to preserve food, but if the salt loses its potency and flavor, it will not serve its purpose. To, preser to preserve and give flavor to food, that's the purpose of salt. Believers are to be salt to a lost and sinful world. If we who have been saved by a perfect Savior, who has broken down the wall of separation, which is sin, between us and the Father by dying and shedding His blood on that cross, if we fail to tell others of this Savior, which we all need, not just through words, but also through our daily walk, then like the flavorless salt, we have become useless servants and jesus speaks about the faithful servants i forget which one is which where it is exactly in matthew but he talks about the three different types of servants um it's, and i also wrote here um as salt we are to have a positive influence on the world around us and then light as light to the world believers believers good works which are words and deeds you know things we do and the things that we say are to shine so that the world, I mean those around us, can, can't help but wonder where this light comes from. The, uh, the faintest of lights will shine like a beacon even in the darkest room. This world is so dark, and it's getting darker by day as we see, that our light, which is Jesus Christ living through us, will illuminate even the darkest of souls. But in order for our light to shine or our salt to have flavor, we must be different than the world. How can our light shine if we are riddled with the sins and lusts of the world? Our walk and our talk must be in such a way that others see the light, the difference in us, which is Jesus Christ. I use this analogy. This is the analogy I use. I love using analogies. So I use the analogy of um, if you're driving and you're in a car, like I've just been driving a lot lately to you know far destinations. And my windshield gets dirty, you know, hitting bugs and rain and whatever it hits it. And you see it gets dirty. I don't see as clearly because all the jerk, uh, junk and, and dirt that's falling on the windshield. And also with my lights, my headlamps, they get, they're not as, as powerful. They become dim because of all the muck that's, you know, been accumulating on it in my long travels. If we allow the dirt of this world to stick to us, Okay, to cling to us, the things that we partake in, okay, um, ungodly things, 
How are those who need a savior, how are those who are walking in this dark, lost world, how are they to see the light? If our light is being being covered with all the dirt of the world that's on us. So we need to ask and pray and ask the Lord to remove the world from us, to strip us of everything of the world, to just cleanse us and renew us so that our light, which is Jesus Christ, may shine brighter on this world so that our salt, which is the word of God and the way we live may bring flavor to those around us. So anyway, so I, I hope that this short video helped you and that you would sit and just examine yourself as the word of God says that we are to always examine ourselves, examine our walk and how, how we're living in front of others. Okay. Because the world is going to look at you. They're going to put you under a microscope. Not to say, wow, look, he's, he's a Christian. I want to know about him. There are going to be some people like that. But the world mostly is going to look at you so they can judge you. And say, hey, look, yeah, you're a Christian and you're supposed to be doing this or doing that. And look at how you're living or look at how you're behaving. So we are to examine ourselves and ask the Lord, Lord, forgive us for anything we've done that's displeased you. No, you know, anything that we've done that, that's not according to your word, not according to your ways. Um, and we should ask him for them to, to help us grow. And some of us, it's almost instant that we change. But for some of us, like myself, it takes a while. But we continue to ask him, Lord, break me and rebuild me. Lord, take me, shape me, and mold me each and every day more and more into the image of your son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we are to do that. So um, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, if you've gone this far in this video, I just pray that you would uh, turn to him, that you would seek him. And that you would ask the light, which is Jesus Christ, to come and shine in you, to live in you. And I promise you that if you honestly and sincerely do seek him, he will make himself known to you. God bless you, my friends.